the reason why you blow the trumpet is that so that the deaf can hear and so that the dumb can understand that there's a new season that has been released. I do it deliberately so that both heaven and earth and even the devils can understand that there's a new season. So that when you are pressing on the place of the season, no devil, no association. The Bible says they shall gather together but not by, but not by him, but as many people that gather together in such a position shall fall for the same. So when you make those announcements, you are calling forth things to come into manifestation. The angels of the Lord that act into the word of his commandment begin to come into operation by the pronouncement of your word. That's why Jesus made it very clear that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, there must be a saying, there must be a pronouncement. The Bible said, declare thou that that may be justified. There's a declaration that comes forth that you must make. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom the Lord has redeemed. There's a saying. There's a pronouncement. There's a declaration. How many preachers do I have in the house this morning? Tell the person you must learn to pronounce. You must learn to declare. Tell the person nothing must shut your mouth. You must learn to speak. You must learn to say. The Lord looking at Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel, shall these bones live? He said, thou knowest, O God. He said, prophesy. I won't speak for you. I won't do it for you. You prophesy. That means God has put his word nigh thy mouth, the word of faith, which we declare. So when you prophesy, all of a sudden, you will hear the rumblings of the bones. You will hear all of the dry bones begin to come alive again. I see dry bones leave. I see those things that seem to be dead. I see it catch life again. Oh, I see your talent coming to manifestation. I see your skill set begin to find expression. Oh, I see a place that will draw forth where they are looking for you. In the name of Jesus, this is the season of encounters and visitations. May I say one more time? You are coming to a place of encounters and visitations. Oh, may I announce to the north, not hear the word of the Lord. I come into divine encounters and visitation. May I announce to the south, south, hear the word of the Lord. I announce a divine encounters and visitation. Oh, west, hear the word of the Lord. According to his prophet, I make an announcement. I come into divine encounters and visitation. Oh, let the east, let the east hear my voice this morning. I make an announcement. I come into divine encounters and visitation. Oh, let the space and the Orions and the galaxies, let them hear the voice of the prophet. I announce, I announce today, divine encounters and visitation. Oh, this is the time to open your mouth and say, I announce. I make that pronouncement upon my family. I make that pronouncement. It's my season of divine encounters and visitation. Don't let somebody speak for you. I announce upon my career, this is the time of encounters and visitation. There'll be so many suddenlies that will hit me, even this season. And suddenly, there was a mighty rushing wind. Oh, and suddenly, the bones begin to come back to life again. And suddenly, there'll be so many suddenlies happening to me this season. Oh, open your mouth and pray one minute. There shall be so many suddenlies in my journey. I see suddenlies. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. I hear somebody here. There'll be all of a sudden in your journey. All of a sudden that there's a turnaround. All of a sudden they called you. All of a sudden they called you. All of a sudden the letter came. All of a sudden he that was forgotten was remembered. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. Let's read Joel chapter 2 as we continue the pronouncement before we break bread this morning. It's not too much of preaching. A lot of the teaching will happen in midweek service where I begin to tear apart the understanding of encounters and visitation. Ah, men get ready for a mighty rushing wind. Tell somebody, say, get ready. No, no, no. Tell the person, Look at the person. Does the person look like somebody that comes to midweek service? Look at the person. He does, does the person look like that? The person sitting beside you, does he look like somebody that comes to midweek service? Or is just one of those Sunday people? No, no, look at the person. He's one of those Sunday people. You know we have Sunday people, but we have midweek people. 
uh, we have Sunday church and we have midweek church. Look at the person. Is it a Sunday church or a midweek church? Tell the person, listen, tell the person, try your best. No, help the person. Try your best. Not to miss midweek in the next two months. After two months, you can go and live again. I get what I'm saying? You can go and live again. <laughs> We permit you to go and leave after two months. But make sure September and October is your month. Something will happen. We were having DTI prayers a few weeks ago. Was it a few weeks ago or a few days ago? I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was last week. So we were teaching we found ourselves teaching the gift of the spirit. We found ourselves. It was not our journey, but we found ourselves there. And when we were teaching, and I told them, and I said, the principle of God is that when there's a teaching, there's a practice. In reality, God is not looking for hearers. He's looking for practitioners. So when God talks about faith, the next thing he's looking, at, looking for are practitioners of faith. When God talks about healing, he's looking for practitioners of healings. When God talks about prosperity, he's looking for practitioners. When he talks about a blessed man, he's looking for an example. So it's not in the teaching alone. He says it's not the hearers that are blessed. It's the doers, the practitioners, people who practice. <laughs> you may be certified and not a practitioner. There are certified Microsoft certified uh, professionals here, but you are not a practitioner. There are certified doctors and lawyers, but you don't practice. That you are certified doesn't mean you know how to practice. You may be certified and not experience the benefit of practice. How many of you understand what I'm saying? We have lawyers in banks. They don't practice. They are bankers. All right? We have doctors who are chef. God help you. You are having a major heart issue and a doctor chef or chef doctor, I don't know where I'll place you now, is the person that approaches you first. He will try to recollect how to resuscitate you. But by the time he's trying to do that, he's thinking of the recipe and the egusi and the Ophi Akbu and all that. Trying to bring you back to life. That's what's in his mind. So he's trying to say, how do I... Because you are not a practitioner. When last did you practice? It's like when demons attack you and you are trying to remember how to cast it out. You are not a practitioner. You've been hearing it, but you didn't practice. Now the demons have come. Now you are calling pastor. Even pastor is trying to sort himself out. I get what I'm saying. He's still trying to also kick out demons. If you are not a practitioner, in the days of manifestation, you will fail. You will fail. Tell someone, say practice. They say practice does what? If you don't practice, you can't come into perfection. The reason why faith fails people is they don't practice faith. Guys, let us not deceive ourselves. You can preach prayer, but if you don't pray, you can't pray. No matter how you preach prayer, you pray. <laughs> oh, you teach prayer for four hours, you pray 15 minutes. You can't, you, can't, you can't experience the spirit of supplication if you don't pray, sir. You, know, you, can, you can teach it, but if you don't practice it, you can't experience it. Church, if you don't practice generosity, you can't be rich by God's standards. You can have money and not be rich. He said, for he make it rich and he does not add sorrow. The rich in the kingdom is different. In the kingdom, we are rich with class. In the kingdom, we are rich with peace. Do you know what that riches mean? You are rich, but you are peaceful. Church, I'm one of those people who will become a billionaire and I can walk on the streets without PA. I just throw. Try it. <laughs> Let your billionaires try it. 
<laughs> Let them go to try it. <laughs> They will just, you just hear that Dangote has been kidnapped. <laughs> because in our kingdom, we are not the one that secure the riches God does. So I want to just remind you, be a practitioner. You see, this season we just entered to, these seasons are for practitioners, not for certified people. Not that I can read Bible, I can quote Bible, no. Practitioners. People that believe God and say, God, if this is it, that's where we're going. Those are the people that have just been released. A great army just got released. They are practitioners. They say, Lord, if we're going to die here, let's die here. I would rather die by faith or living. I would rather die believing God than living doubt. These are practitioners. Those are the people that will come up. So this season will separate men from boys. This is the season... Where the, where the rubber will meet the road. It will be so clear that you are not, the, it will be so clear you are not a practitioner this, king, this particular season. If you do not come into it, you will shout and nobody will hear. You will cry out, nobody will hear. Because you are not a practitioner. You need to practice this season. I came to announce to somebody here, the days of playing is over. Listen, this season, even if you don't want the trouble of the devil, the devil will find your trouble. Oh, talk to me, church. Are you here? I said this season, even if you don't want the trouble, I said the devil will find your trouble. That's this season. Because there's violence that has been released. Ah, there is a way and a war that has been released. You must have a nice posture this season. Jewel chapter 2. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Are we in Joel chapter 2? Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Let's read in concert. One, two, go. Everyone do what? Matches information and they do not what? Mm -hmm. Next. Yes. Uh -huh. They run on the wall. They enter the windows like a thief. Your voice is going down. Mm -hmm. The Lord gives us, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Mm -hmm. Says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping. And with mourning mm -hmm. and not your garments return to the Lord your God for his what? his gracious uh -huh. 
and he relents from doing harm. Uh -huh. the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Uh -huh. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the nursing babies. Let the bride go oh, and the bride from our dressing room. Let them come out. It's a serious issue. Let the priest who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not give your heritage to reproach that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the people? Why should they say so? Where is their God? Uh huh. Then the Lord will be zealous for this tribe and pity his people. Uh huh. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, oh, this is a good time. Uh huh. And you, uh -huh, and you be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. Next one. But I will remove from you the northern army. And I will drive me away into a barren and a desolate land. With his face towards the eastern sea. And his back toward the western sea. His stench will come on. And his foul order will rise. Because he has done monstrous things. Next verse. Fear not, O land, be glad, rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Next verse, please. Do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears fruit, and the fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the form of rain faithfully. And he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Next one. Then the threshing floor shall be full of wheat. And the vase shall... Oh, oh, come on. There's a new oil coming for somebody here. A new wine and a new oil. Next one, please. So I will restore... Oh... The years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crowning locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you, I'm going to restore it. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Next verse. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of the potter's house of Lagos. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Next verse. And it shall come to pass afterward. This is where I'm going to. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. Next verse. And also on my men servant, and on my men servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days, these days, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. Next verse. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and the awesome day of the Lord. In the last verse. And it shall come to plan. That whosoever, everybody say whosoever, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. And the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord has called. Give God praise and praise and praise. Pastor, what are we doing this season? Divine visitation is a season of heightened awareness of the divine presence of the Lord. Church, God is everywhere. We agree? 
We agree. God is everywhere. But God is not in everything. I say that again. God is everywhere, but God is not in everything. That's the reason why you can be with God all your life. Until God is in what you're doing, you may not experience the manifestations of God. There's something we call the omni presence. There's something we call the manifesting presence. God can be with all of us here for years and he will not show up. But he's here. How do we know he's here? Because the Bible said everything is made manifest before him. There is nothing hidden before God. Everything is made manifest. But God will not show himself except certain things are in order. I hope you know that God shows up in many places. God will decide and say, I'm going to visit this house today. There is something that triggers God's visitation. We'll be teaching on that later. But what divine visitation and encounter means is that it is a manifesting dimension of his presence. For God to manifest then it becomes a visitation on an encounter. It means that God is showing forth with solution in an issue. When God visits you, he... <laughs> I many of you have watched Coming to America before? At least everybody should have watched Coming to America. When the father of Eddie Murphy landed in the U.S., to come and visit his son. If you remember that particular scene when he went to the block of flats that the Timothy was staying, you remember that when he entered as a king and he entered into the house, the whole place knew that a king came in. Not even the whole place, the whole city. <laughs> that is how God, when he visits you, you know, God does not walk alone. The Bible says that he walked with chariots of his angels. He said, he that seated on the circle of the earth with all of his chariots of angels in fire. So when God visits your room, the whole street will know that God came. That's what visitation means. You can, God cannot visit you and we don't know. So when people say, God, God visited me. No, 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 no. No, you don't understand. Maybe a spirit came. But if the Elohim came to visit you, your countenance will be altered. You can't remain the same. You can't. That's why I always laugh when people say, oh, we had visitation, we had visitation. I say, no, you didn't have visitation. <laughs> An angel passed by. <laughs> one angel. You know, one angel just, he was trying to take a message. So there was an angel bringing a message to Pastor Manuel few days ago and passed your street. I get what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so in passing your street, you felt the impasse. Ah, something happened. No, no, it wasn't you. They were bringing answers to. They were bringing it to a house. But they were just past your street. When visitation happens to people, they change. You don't have a visitation and your name remains the same. Ah, when the Lord visited Jacob in the wrestling. After he finished with Jacob all night. All night. What you call a vigil where you are sleeping and acting drama is not all night. What you call a vigil when you are drinking tea and praying is not all night. He had all night wrestling with Jehovah. When he got almost daybreak, the man he fought said, leave me. I want to go. He said, you will not go, sir. I have waited all night. All night. Church, please stop going to vigil if your name is not changing. Ah, may I announce it again? Stop going to vigil. You go to this vigil. You go to that vigil. You keep going to vigil. You are not changing. Change. <laughs> you are changing vigils, but you are not changing. <laughs> In, the days, in those days when I used to jump prayers, I was a prayer merchant. 
I was jumping all kinds of prayer. I remember one time, we just finished prayer in, um, in, in um, four square, I think. We just finished a video. My friend had told me, ah, there's another prayer going on in, in those days. MFM just started. He said, let's hit M MFM. We just finished night. When I hit MFM, we just entered. As we entered into the MFM, you know, we just finished praying. I just entered. Ah, oh, boy. So I just, I just got, I was a prayer merchant. They, we didn't even know the prayer point they were giving. All we knew that all of us were shaking our head. I was just follow. I just noticed we were following emotion. After a while, I lifted up my head. I said, ah, "Oh boy, what are we praying?" <laughs> Nobody could describe. Ah. After a while, I just packed my Bible. I said, ah, ah, "Imagine you just finish prayer in four square. You now say, let me add MFM to it.' Now some of you will do MFM." You do four square. Then you add another one. Then when you add everything, you should ask yourself a question. Am I changing? Because when you have an encounter with Jehovah, your name will change. Something will break somewhere. The Bible said, and the angel or the man that they wrestled with, he said he broke his, 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 his rib, or his, 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 um, what do you call it, his waist side. He broke it to an extent that he started limping. He was limping because God took trust from man to himself. May the Lord give you an encounter that will remove trust from man. Even what am I even saying? Something you have always trusted away from God is going this season. Uh, you will see. You will see. That thing that you there's a subtle trust that you've always had. As far as that thing is there, you have a calm, you have a calm spirit. That thing is going. I don't know what that thing is, but it's going. You will share the testimony that ah, I trusted this thing. No, I trusted it. But the thing go, went. It couldn't stand. Job chapter 42 verse 5. He said, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. That's an encounter. When you get to a point that what you are hearing, you are seeing. I pray in the name of Jesus. Things that you are hearing today, you will see with your eyes. Oh, I said you will see. You will not just be a hearer, you will see what you are hearing in the name of Jesus. You will not be hearing that people got healed. You will see that there's a healing in your body. You will not be hearing that people were blessed. You will see the blessings of the Lord. Job said in Job 42 verse 5, I have heard you by the hearing of the ear, but now I see you. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, he said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting on the throne, lofty and exalted with the train of his robe filling the temple. In the year that the King Uzziah died and I had an encounter with the Lord and I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. Thank God for King Uzziah that died. Oh, we prayed that prayer in those days and I pray it here today. Anything that represents King Uzziah in your life, I've seen that thing being reduced. I see that thing being removed in the name of Jesus that thing has been covering you from seeing God. Is he a man? Is he a situation? Is he a relationship? Is he a job? I see that king. That king is dethroned this morning. I said that king is dethroned this morning in the name of Jesus. As we pray prayer and kick off with our fast tomorrow. Tell somebody our fasting starts tomorrow. No, no, look at the person. And look at the person. Does the person, does the person look like somebody that fasts normally? They, look at the person. Oga, okay, you have been eating all year. Tell the person, you need to reduce now. You need to reduce. Tell the person, you're about to go into a fast. Tell the person, it's about 20 something days. I just actually let you know ahead. 20 something days. So tell the person, brace up. Just brace up. I'm just saying, just brace up. All right? Tell the person, it's going to help your health. Leave the shaki alone this season. Leave the Kwamo alone this season. Tell the person leave the pound and yam alone this season. Tell the person leave uh, leave bread alone this season. Look at the person leave bread alone this season. Oh, tell the person we're doing Daniel fast. Leave bread alone this season. Get ready for vegetables. Tell the person get ready for vegetables. Get ready for fruits. Oh, no, the person is not talking. Look at the person. Get ready for vegetables. Get ready for fruit. You can't you can't be eating pound and yam in the place of prayer until you hear God. You will hear yourself, sir. What are you talking about? After eating pound and yam, and you say we're praying, you jump in your knee and hear it. You say, Pastor, I heard something. No, you didn't hear anything. You heard yourself. We've been there before. 
You'll be praying and you'll be hearing voices. You say, ah, Pastor, I heard the Holy Spirit. You didn't hear the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of the food, sir. Food has spirit. Have you not heard people that eat good food say, oh, oh boy, that food was good. Food can speak. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. That means, listen, bread can speak. He said, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. We're fasting. You must prepare. Listen, in the kingdom, you press to receive. You must learn the principle of press. People are too lazy in spiritual issues. You are very fervent in material issues. But in spiritual issues, you are lazy, sir. You should have more strength in the spirit than the physical. The funny thing is this. If you have strength in the spirit, you cover the physical. But people are lazy. People are lazy. People are lazy. People are lazy. Sometimes, when I do vigil with people, when we have vigil, some groups, when we have vigil, I used to laugh. Because when we have vigil, by the time we kick off, we kick off like 30 minutes, one hour. I'll be watching them. We just kick off, one hour. Before you know, before we do one hour, 10 minutes, you just people begin to look for places. They begin to look for um, areas of abode. They begin to look for secret places. Not in the most high. But they will just be looking for places. You know, where to, where to fellowship. Not with God. But we sleep. They will not be looking for places. I will not be wondering. Then we do two hours. When I want to trouble them, I will come near them. They will not be able to sleep. I will trouble their life. I will pray in their ears. Two, three hours. We are standing. By the, by the fourth hour, the same person, you just see the person. All of a sudden, the person is vibrant. You know how you are, you know how you are alive towards the end of a prayer. I, you, you, know, you know those type of you know those type of video. You are not alive in the beginning. By 4.30, you just see the person begin to talk. Cow watcher. Hey, better. Oh, God, relax. Relax. You have been sleeping since. You have been sleeping since. People have been praying. Oh, we need to be... Listen, I want you to be serious this season. When they call a prayer, be there. When they call a meeting, be there. We're going to be having 12 midnight watch. 3 p.m. watch. Is it 3 p.m.? 12 midnight. 12 p.m. 12 noon. 4 p.m. When they call those watch, join the watch. Even if you're in the office and you click and the prayer is going on, just put it there. Be doing what you're doing. But make sure it's going on and you're connected. This is the time to push Push your limit in the place of prayer. If you have been a 30 minutes prayer man or a 30, 40 minutes prayer man, this is time to push to an hour. Try to start doing hour. Try to do one hour praying in the Holy Ghost for a while. If you are a one hour person, push to two hours praying in the Holy Ghost for a while. Learn to begin to push in the place of prayer. You can't continue like this and expect something to change, sir. You can't continue the same style. You can't continue to drink milk and think you will grow muscle. It's not possible. Strong meat belong to those. So there's something called strong meat. Strong meat in the spirit. There's something called strong meat. Strong meat belongs. He said milk. Milk is for babies. Milk is for babies. Even God feels pain when he sees his child that should be eating meat is still drinking milk. Do you not feel pain? Parents here, do you not feel pain? I, I was preaching in one place and I told them, when you see your child at about two, three, and that child is still bedwetting, you know, you don't, you don't, uh, at two, you don't, okay, okay. At, at four, still bedwet, okay, okay. At, at seven, okay, okay. You, you know, you are still, you know. At ten, you now begin to tap your wife, honey. The guy is still bad, you know. <laughs> He said, uh, let's, let's just, let's try, let's, let's, you talk to the boy, what's wrong with you? Why are you, <laughs> okay, okay, sleep early. Don't, no, don't take this, don't take, okay, okay. At 14, ah, you know, you now start saying, you, you say, you, you, ha. He said, ah, no, no, let, should we see the doctor? Should we, you, no, you now first check doctor. You just say, for some people, you just say, let's check the doctor, let's check the doctor. At 16, ah, you leave doctor that spirit you not be, you not be, <laughs> you not be looking for people you'll be looking for prophet every spirit of bedwetting we bind that spirit at 20 do you know that's how God is reacting on some of us here this is how God say ah <laughs> God is looking at some people and say ah 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 because why? You've been born again for years, sir. But every time you come to God, Lord, give me milk. Give me milk. He said, no, meat, milk, milk. 
take meat. No, me glow, me glow. Because all you are always thinking about is fish and bread. If fish and bread does not come, you get irritated. If you have not eaten fish and you have not eaten your bread, you get frustrated. Because the Lord did not answer your prayers in two weeks. You are angry. You just tell yourself, I'm even disborn again now. I'm going to disborn again. And you are thinking that if you disborn again, God will change. So, because God did not give you the admission, you hate God. I don't like what's happening to me. Because you didn't get the promotion, you are troubled about God. You are fish and bread, sir. You are fish and bread. Jesus was looking at them. He said, Jesus, we're looking for you. He said, why are you looking for me? Why are you looking for me? Is it not the fish and bread miracle I did a few weeks ago? Is that not why you guys are looking for me? He said, no, no, we seek you, Jesus. We seek for you. I, I can imagine some of them come to me, Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we seek for you. We are looking for you. We want to know you. Ah, ah. Jesus said, ah, ah. It was a fish and bread miracle I did a few weeks ago. He said, no, master, we seek for you. Okay, Jesus said, okay, if you seek for me, you seek for me, okay. If you can eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll be part of me. Kill Atiso. Jesus, we only said we seek for you. Now you are saying we should be eating your flesh and drinking your blood. Scripture said it was a hard sin. Ah! The Bible said that and many of them turned away. Hey, a 5,000 capacity church turned to 12 overnight. If I'm the pastor of that church, if I was the head pastor and Jesus the founder, I would say, Gio, 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 we don't need to talk like this. Let us, Gio, let's manage it. Gio, Jesus, let's manage it. Don't, don't just tell them to eat your flesh. I will, I will tell them, let's strategize. I will tell them, uh, church, um, eat a little, a little flesh of Jesus, then eat fish. Mix it, do fish flesh. <laughs> combo, combo, go, combo. Fish flesh combo. <laughs> no, fish flesh diet. Use a little of Jesus and a little, a little of material stuff. Just, just hand it to it. Jesus, we are losing members. Offering is reducing. Jesus, take it easy. Take it easy. You are too hard. You are too hard. Jesus now said, hey, hey, Jesus went further. He now looked at the 12. He's now a 12 capacity church. Jesus looked at the 12 and said, hey, 12. Why are you still here? Ah, Jesus. We are still trying to get member. You are chasing 12 again. <laughs> because Jesus is not interested in your membership. Jesus, listen, Jesus is more worried about people that will come to heaven than you gathering your membership. And let me even remind you, Lagos Church, hear the word of the Lord. I make it, let me make it very clear. That you are coming to church does not number you. Even those days when I used to go to Catholic, in those days when I used to go to St. Dominic's, anytime I go to service, I know that I'm just trying to calm myself that I have attended church. Even the way you always come is as if I gave God offering. Lord, I just gave you your Sunday. <laughs> you know how some people just say, oh, let me just go to church on Sunday. Let me give God his Sunday so that he can give me my Monday. Who is deceiving who? Oh, I love Jesus. He knows the heart of men. He said, I know their heart. This is the year or the season of visitation. God is visiting the heart of the people. He's checking your heart. He will give his rewards when he sees your heart, sir. He's knowing where your heart is. Are you seeking him? He said, you will seek me. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. He said, you will find me when you seek for me with the whole of your heart. You can't seek God partially. You seek with the whole. God is not interested in part-time loving. In the kingdom, he's not part-time lover. You are either full-time or no time. Ah! You can't love God partially. You love God totally. Totally. Everybody say visitation. Oh, help me church. Everybody say visitation. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. I'm only giving you what it is so that we can press in the place of prayer and preach it over the season. He said, as it is written, things which I have not seen, ears have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, God revealed them through his spirit. For the spirit search all things, even the depths of God, or yea, the deep things of God. Some of you will encounter deep truths this season. Oh, can I get a better amen there? 
Second Corinthians chapter 12, 2 to 4. Second Corinthians chapter 12, 2 to 4. This was Paul talking. He said, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise. And I heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. Church, oh, come on, put your hand in your ear. Just, just one minute. Let's just pray prayer. Put your hand in your ear and pray, Lord, say, let my ear open, oh God. Oh, let me hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Enough is enough. I don't want to be hearing men. I want to hear you, oh God. Lord, let me hear the voice of the Spirit. Come on, pray for your hearing. No, no, the physical here, we're just putting our hand. We're talking about spiritual, but put your hand in your ear as a point of contact. Lord, let my ear hear a sound. Let me hear a sound in heaven. Let me hear a sound in heaven. Let me hear a direction. Let me know. Let me know. Enough of confusion. Enough of near misses. A spirit of accuracy. Let it rest upon me. Come on, speak to your hearing this morning. Speak to your hearing this morning. My ear will hear. My ear will hear. My ear will hear. I come against deafness. Oh, I just heard a word in my spirit. I come against the spirit of deafness in the spirit. I come against the spirit of deafness. You will not be deaf. You will not be deaf. I come against that spirit. That I bind that spirit of deafness. Oh, your ear will open. There's no confusion. You will know. You will know. You will know. Look at me. I heard it clearly in my spirit right now. Talking about Samuel. The Bible recalls when the Lord was trying to call Samuel. He called Samuel, but Samuel was hearing another voice. When the Lord called Samuel, Samuel went to meet Eli and said, Master, you call at me. He said, I'm not calling you. He called him again the second time. Master, you call at me. He said, I'm not calling you. He called him again the third time. Only Samuel in the Bible have I seen in the scripture that the Lord called four times. On the fourth time when the Lord called him, and he went to meet Eli. Eli said, hey, how did the Lord call you? Let me know. How did he call you? Did, he, did the Lord say, did the Lord say Sami? Or, or was he Samu or Sami? <laughs> he said, if he's Sami, that must be the Lord. <laughs> that must be the Lord. I have worked with him to know how he calls. Now, now, and he said, okay, so listen again. He's going to call. He's going to call. He said, but when he calls, this time around says, speak, Lord, for your servant hear it. Do you know that God did not give the next instruction until Samuel answered the call? Now, a lot of you have not moved to your next level because you've not heard the call, number one. You've not moved to your next level because you've not even answered the call. No, if you cannot even hear the call, how will you answer the call? So I'm praying today, any spirit of deafness in the ears of people, I pray today, I pray in that spirit, it's time to hear the call. Your hearing will open. Oh, I said your hearing will open. Do you know why people struggle in marriages, struggle on who they will marry, the job they will do? Do you know why people struggle to know whether they will travel or not? Is hearing, sir. If you hear well, you will do well. Oh, should I say that again? I said, if you hear well, you will do well. The reason why people are confused on their journey is because they are not hearing well. When you hear somebody say, Pastor, I'm not sure. Mm, I hear that. If you say, Pastor, I'm not sure. I just heard you. There's, the, what you are saying there is that you are dull of hearing. When God heal your hearing, oh God, you will operate in the spirit of accuracy. People who are confused are people who are dull of hearing. They can't make decisions because if you are deaf, you can't make decisions. If you hear, you will make the right decision. And I'm saying this season, you will know whether to travel or not. <laughs> There's some people Oh, church, are you ready for this season? I'm just asking. Are you ready for this season? No, you are not even looking ready. The way, the way all of you are sitting down, you're not helping my feet. Are you ready for this season? Do you know there's some people that the Lord will use this small voice for? Because they can hear. There's some people, the Lord is shouting. Do well. Do well. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> The person, he said, he said, like Proverbs chapter 17, he said, he does not hear anything. He's just going. He's just going like this. He's following the, he's following the prostitute. He's going, he's going. And they're shouting, hey, young man, young man, where are you going to? There is death there. I don't know what you're saying. Jerry. He's not hearing anything. He's not hearing. He's not hearing. Bible says there are some people who snatch out of fire. We will not preach to them, we we'll snatch them. 
You know, there's some people like that, that we need to start out of fire. The guy is gone. We snatch them. Mm. You are not going to hell. The prayer of your mother will snatch you out of fire. I know what that snatching means. You will have a sudden accident. Your leg will almost break. That's snatching. You know. Oh, you know, oh, okay. You thought the snatching is uh, give your life to Christ. No, 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 no. The snatching is that something will hit you. You'll be in the hospital like this. They won't, they won't preach you. You say, I want to give my life to Christ. <laughs> I've seen people that have gone through serious pain before. You don't need to preach. The woman will come in. Just, um, do you love Jesus? I want to give my I, I just wait. Let me finish the message. Before you say you want to give your life to Christ, let me finish the message. Snatch out of fire. You are dull of hearing. This season, what will separate men from boys is their hearing. Let him that has here. Did you hear that scripture? Let him that has here. Don't go. Here. That means you can have here. And not here. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, help me to hear. Oh, Lord, let me to hear the sound of heaven. Do you know that David was fellowshipping one morning and he was having a lovely time with the Lord. He was just worshipping. All of a sudden, he broke into the conversation of heaven and he heard what was going on. Ah, what am I hearing? The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy first too. Wow! David heard it and said, wow, what am I hearing? I'm hearing heavenly stuff here. He that do let the school of the most high shall abide under the shadow. Wow, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David was having a fantastic time. How do you, guys, guys, do you know how they describe David? They say when they went to fetch David, they went to fetch him in the backside of the desert. Should I share something for you guys? David was not with a babel at the backside of the desert. David was with animals. But he was having fantastic time. He was having fellowship with the Lord. That was where he was pulling those fantastic psalms. All of you pull. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd. So this is where I see David. He would just sit down like this. And we're looking at the sheep. And the sheep would be moving. And downloads would just begin to come. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wow. Wow. That's David. <laughs> then he, all of a sudden, he would look at an antelope. An antelope is running. He said, as the deer panted after the water broke, so my soul longed after you. He was all pulling psalms. Pull. When last did you compose a psalm to the Lord? When last? Wake that man that is sleeping there. When, when last? That's what I'm saying. When in your mind, everything that is fooling your spirit is Davido. That's what is fooling your spirit. It's Bonaboy that's fooling that is fooling your spirit. That some of you used to worship. I get what I'm saying. You use it to worship. You know some of you use some of those songs to worship. You say, we're worshiping God, Pastor. We're worshiping God. It's God we're worshiping. That's the, that's the reason. That's the reason. You can't pull, you can't pull spiritual hymns if you're not spiritual. And when we're saying spiritual, we're not talking about religion. We're talking about fellowship. You can only birth if you have been impregnated. And the word, and the word, the Lord knew him. Is intercourse. You don't understand. The scripture, when he say, and the Lord knew him, is the same verse of scripture that Paul was saying that I may know him. He's talking about intercourse. So when we're talking about sexual stuff, he's talking about intercourse. He says, so have an intercourse with the Holy Spirit. And when you have an intercourse with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will deposit a seed. You get pregnant. You can't have an encounter and not be pregnant. How can you have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit? You don't come back with pregnancy. What's wrong with us? That means all the time you've been doing fellowship. What pregnancy did you come up with? You've been coming out, parent. Oh, guys, it's not the Holy Spirit you're fellowship with. Because nobody fellowship with the Holy Spirit and not carry a seed out. You must carry a seed out. It's the seed that will birth. All you need is one encounter, sir. One. Your life will not remain the same. All this jumping from one revival to another. I love the way that Abonke said it one day. He, I was listening to him. I was listening to one of his messages. He said he's tired of people coming. He, he, they were using this word. Oh, we're in the season of fresh anointing. He said, why are they always using the word fresh anointing? Fresh anointing. He said, where is the... the... <laughs> where, where is the, the anointing you got three days ago? He said, when, what always happens is when you don't know how to master or how to use... We will now come back again and steer your emotion again. I say, now, everybody get ready for the fresh anointing. Oh, God, oh, God, leave this fresh anointing alone. Where is the one? We want we got a few days ago. Where is it? 
When Rena Bonke said that thing, I just said, oh my God, forgive me. I've gone to join these charlatans to be saying what they say. Lord, help my soul. There's an anointing you've anointed us. He said, for, for because you love righteousness and hated iniquity, he said, the Lord thy God has anointed you. You are anointed. He said, you do not need that anyone should teach you anything. He said, but the anointing in you teaches you all things. So there's like, you are anointed. All this fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Where is the anointing you have? Tell somebody you are anointed already. You are anointed. Tell the person, what did you use the last anointing for? Where is it? Where did you, what did you use for? No, where did you use for? Did you raise the dead? Did you cast out demon? Pastor, leave that one alone. Okay, let me come smaller. Did you win a soul? No, Pastor, that one is too. Okay, let me, let me make you clear. Did you baptize somebody in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Pastor, let's leave that one. I use mine to, to do trade in a forex. No problem. Let's get ready as we begin to jump into the communion. I just want to announce and to prepare all of us. Divine encounters and visitation is when anything God decides, anytime, it means that anytime God decides, it means that God can decide at any time to break the protocol and the norms upon the earth. That's what divine visitation means. 2 Kings 3.17 I want us to read it then we'll start breaking bread. This is a pronouncement to somebody here. This will practically happen to somebody. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 17. Are we ready? Can we read it one to go? What does it say? For thus said the Lord. You shall not say when. Uh-huh. So that what? Your cattle and your animals may drink. Can you read it one more time? You may know what? For thus said the Lord. Read it like a preacher. You shall not see the wind. Uh-huh. You shall not see rain. Uh-huh. Yet your valley will be filled with water. I pray in the name of Jesus that even though you do not see that that thing is coming, but your valley will be filled with water this season. Some of you will receive water in your valley that your eyes did not see. In the name of Jesus. Some of you will get a promotion that your name was not even listed in the first place. There is nothing stirring that promotion because the encounter of God will find you in the name of Jesus. Some of you will get a result that on a good day is not supposed to be your result. But God decided to break the protocol and break the norms of the earth and bring forth your goods in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, I hear a job is coming for somebody here. Your name was not even on the job, but the Lord will pull it out for you. In the name of Jesus, I hear a result is coming. That result is not your result. Your result is actually failure. There is no wind, there is no rain, but God will fill this valley. God will fill this emptiness. God will fill this valley with water. In the name of Jesus. Be seated. That's one of the things that is coming. Anytime God decides to break protocol and the norms of the earth is what we call divine encounter. Another one is when God, oh, I love this one. When God decides to honor a man earthly forgotten and despised. Esther chapter 6. Somebody here is about to experience what I call the Mordecai anointing. Woo! Nobody has said that before. I just, I just created that myself. Mordecai anointing is an anointing of remembrance, meaning the things you have done before that you never even knew that it was recorded. I see the Lord pull out the records on your behalf. All of a sudden, somebody you have helped somebody you have helped that you don't know that you helped a lovely sister shared a testimony with me yesterday <laughs> and I was still dancing I was just dancing in my heart somebody you met or somebody you met that say he met you but you don't know you met is calling you out of the blues after some years and says that I know you, you met me and he said I, don't, I didn't meet you I, didn't, I can't even remember that I met you he said but don't worry, what do you need what's your concern and the person said this is my concern, this is my concern, this is my concern and immediately the person started 
getting the concerns done. She doesn't know the person. That is not normal. I told the person, I said, it's not normal. I have to be asking other questions just to be sure. Because when you are telling me things or telling me testimony, I try to, you know, you know, you believers are very dangerous. You know, you, you go and share a testimony now. <laughs> we don't know the full scope. Are you getting me? Huh? After, after we now make the testimony, you just say, ah, Pastor, I, I forgot to mention to you that, uh, that, 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 no, no, no. But I asked her the question and as I was asking the question, it was clearer that God can choose and say, today, the king is not sleeping. The governor is not sleeping. There's somebody here. The governor is not sleeping. No. On your case, whoever the governor represents, I make that pronouncement for somebody here as we enter into this season. I said that governor will not sleep. I said that managing director will not sleep. Oh, I said that. Oh, oh, I said that managing director will not sleep. That CEO will not sleep. Church, church, do you know it is the Lord that brings the thoughts of men into the hearts of men? Do you know that all of a sudden, it happens to me, people that I've also blessed, I wasn't planning them. God just brought their thought into my, into my thought. And the moment he brings, they give it to him. That's the same way God will also take my face. The heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. And as the river that floweth, he directs it. God can bring my face, my image, and put it in the heart of the governor. I say, there's a man that is coming. Answer him. I've not entered yet. He said, answer him. So as you come, he said, we'll be waiting for you. I make a pronouncement this season for somebody here. Ah, you will have an encounter. Hey, you've been hearing it, but you will see this season. Lord, I say you will have an encounter in the name of Jesus. Ah, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Okay. Number three. What encounters? I just gave you one. Anything that God decides to break, anytime God decides to break a protocol or the norms of the earth, anytime He decides to honor a man that is utterly forgotten and despised, Mordecai. Any this one, anytime God wants to judge a situation and show Himself mighty on behalf of someone. Oh, vindication is coming. Oh, I said vindication is coming. There's somebody here. Maybe you have somebody that has been accused or put in prison for what, whatever reason. Get ready. The release is coming. There's, there's a visitation coming upon somebody that has been in prison wrongly. I said there is a visitation coming for you. There's a judgment. There's a judgment of the Lord coming and you will be set free in the name of Jesus. Do you know Joshua and Caleb? The Bible says that when they stood for God, God stood for them. They said, they said, they said, hey, we are well and able to take this nation. And the people took stone and said, you are a stupid man. And they wanted to stone, stone, stone him, stone them. And God showed up. <laughs> God showed up them. What do you want to do? We want to stone Joshua and Caleb. What is wrong with you? These guys have another kind of spirit. Church, when you stand for him, he stands for you. Shadrach mentioned and Abednego. They say we will not bow. We will not bow. And the moment they enter into the fire, you remember the story. All of a sudden, the Bible said there was a fourth man in the fire. Fourth man in the fire. The encounter we're about to have this season. Please, I'm begging you. I'm going to teach on it on Wednesday. Stand, even if it doesn't make sense. Stand, even if it's not comfortable or convenient. Stand, even if it's against you. Even if you're going to lose the deal, stand! I say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to defy myself with the king's meat. Because as you stand for him, he will stand. He will show up. If you want God's visitation, you stand for him. He will show up. I'll tell you this last one. Is when God decides. So the one I mentioned now is Numbers 14. This last one, when God decides to use the foolish things to confound the wise, that's an encounter. David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, 50 to 53. Can you open that for us? And we'll close with that. 1 Samuel 17, 50 to 53. 
Church, I want you to hear this. He said, so David prevailed over the Philistine. With what? Oh, talk to me, church. With what? Please, give us, give us the message version so that maybe you can help some people. You know, they don't understand what sling means. He said, that's how David beat the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Can you give us NLT? Maybe they explain it better. Or good news. I just want it to be simpler so that people can understand it. Or amplified or something. Give us another version. Good news, NLT. Is, is everything is slain? Give us good news. All of them are slain. Is that good news? Good news? Ah, okay. Let's stay with the sling. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe there's another version. He said, and so, I like this one. And so, what? Nepali no shebranti. You're about to have victory with foolish things. <laughs> things that does not make sense. You come to me with swords and you come to me with javelin. I come in the name of the Lord. Goliath said, ah, am I a dog that you come to me with a stick and a sling? No, you don't understand. Goliath, I have your head already. <laughs> it's not a battle. Goliath was fighting David. David shifted the battle to the battle of gods. Goliath wanted to fight David. On a good day, Goliath would tear David apart. David knew. David didn't say, I am the one fighting you. Uh, you, you. You see, all of you, stop fighting the devil. You can't fight the devil. Even Archangel Michael in Jude said, he did not bring any railings against Satan. He said, the Lord rebukes you. How can you now think you can fight the devil? <laughs> all you need to do is just shift the battle from me and you <laughs> to God. So when somebody, when a Babalao looks at you and says, I'm going to kill you, Say, Baba, you don't understand. I'm not the one fighting. I'm not the one fighting. Shift the battle to God. And the moment you shift the battle to God and God takes the battle, at that moment you go to rest because the battle is the Lord's. Church, are you here? So he said, and without a sword, without a sword, David defeated. David defeated. This is what I'm saying. Without your proposal to have entered into the bid, that company won the bid. How? By integrity. But have you seen a bid where everybody bided? And somebody said, please, is this particular company inside? He says, no, cancel the bid. Have you, have you seen those type of bid? Is this, is this company inside? No, no, cancel the bid. Let them repeat again. Because you are not there. They cancel the bid because they feel all those people that are there are rogues. I need somebody in that bid that can do the job. Righteousness is reigning now. Righteousness will reign. Righteousness will give you victory. Righteousness will bring that deliverance. Righteousness will bring that benefit. Lift up your hand. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos global broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.